So today's a big day for Sony. They just announced the A9 Mark II. Seems like it was just not that long ago that I was sitting here talking about the A9 and how it's not just a camera for sports. Well, the A9 Mark II has been announced. Uh, I have not had hands-on time with it. Sony did not have a press event for this release. I had a phone call with Sony a few days ago where they gave myself and others the rundown on the camera. The A9 Mark II basically comes down to more speed, more features for professional photographers, those who are shooting sports, action, even weddings, uh, those who are going to maybe be using them at the next Olympics. So the updates to the Sony A9 Mark II, as I was told, uh, were things that could not be done via firmware using the original A9, the original processor. So while the new A9 Mark II uses the same camera sensor, which is excellent, uh, it still has 20 frames per second, uh, no blackout shooting. Uh, the mechanical shutter is now 10 frames per second um, in that area, but it mostly comes down to improved processing and speed. Uh, a new Bion's X and front end LSI were required to add new functionality to Sony's flagship mirrorless, which will result in faster, more precise autofocus, as if it wasn't fast enough already, and improved EVF di display response times. Uh, more accurate tracking. The fast hybrid AF system uses a 693 point phase detect array with 93% coverage to track subjects. Um, now you can select the focus frame color. We'll be able to move the frame while the shutter is half pressed in AFC mode. Another significant improvement um, in usability comes in the form of AF tracking when shooting at F16 when in focus priority mode and the option to focus with opened aperture just before exposure. Basically, this is saying it's increased performance in low light. Um, also supports the latest real-time AF tracking mode that helps maintain focus on fast-moving subjects and includes real-time IAF in pho for photographs as well as for video. Now, this is not going to be a video machine. There's no S-Log, there's no uh, fancy video features. We're gonna wait for the A7S III for that. This camera's all about taking photos and catching that moment with Sony's best autofocus speed, their best processing power. Uh, it says another speed focus tweak comes to continuous shooting. While the A9 II still maxes out at an incredible 20 frames per second and still boasts no blackout, the mechanical shutter speed has been doubled from five frames per second to 10 frames per second and benefits from anti-flicker detection to ensure clean, bright exposures. The shutter has been enhanced. It's now rated to 500,000 exposures. Uh, still has the in-body stabilization. It's getting a boost to 5.5 stops. Uh, the EVF and LCD have remained unchanged. They're both excellent as is. Um, both SD cards now support UHS-2 for faster write times. Um, so there's all this stuff basically giving a boost to speed and performance. Um, an improved processor gives greater efficiency, so you're gonna get more shots out of the battery. The cameras also uh, can now accept the new digital mics that they announced with the A7R Mark IV. There's new things basically that were implemented in response to professionals asking Sony for these changes. So it makes a lot of sense for professionals. The A9, um, as of today, the A9 Mark II, I will say it is really uh, for professionals who want speed. If you're looking for resolution, the A7R Mark IV in the Sony line, if you want an all around amazing camera bang for the buck, the A7 III is still kicking butt, I own one. But yeah, that's the A9 Mark II. It's uh, now available to pre-order at $4,500 in the US. It will start shipping in November, just before the holidays. But you know what? I wanna also talk about this new camera that I've been using for the past few days, and it's become my most used camera for my personal moments, for family moments, for heading out, for social media, for all of that kind of stuff. And even if I wanna make you know, some little prints, uh, this is going to do just fine. Let me get it out of my pocket because it's in my pocket. This is the iPhone. Let me get a shot here. 
This is the iPhone 11 Pro Max, and it is a pretty huge camera upgrade. It has a pretty huge camera upgrade. Now, I have not been fans of smartphone cameras up until now, up until the iPhone 11 Pro. I see them as like something, if I wanna take a snapshot, if I'm out and I don't have a camera with me, but with the 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max, that kind of changes everything for me. Now this is always in my pocket, it's always with me. It's always in my pocket, it's always with me, and the technology now that Apple has brought forth for the imaging in the iPhone is pretty incredible. We have three lenses, and most of you already know all of the specs and all of this stuff, um, but you have an ultra-wide angle lens, you have a standard lens, and you have a portrait focal length kind of lens, right? Uh, they've improved their portrait modes, and even the front-facing camera has a portrait mode with a wide-angle feature. So you can take selfies or uh, selfies with you and a friend or whatever, and they will have some depth of field to them. Check out this image I shot of Debbie and myself yesterday as we were out uh, enjoying lunch. I used the front-facing camera, I set it to wide-angle, and I set it to portrait mode, and this is the result. While the bouquet is fake, it looks pretty darn good these days, uh, much better than it was when Apple first implemented this feature. Now there are other phones out there that are have remarkable cameras. I feel Sony, or I feel uh, Sony. I feel Apple is a little late to the game, but I am so happy they upgraded the camera because you can take a picture with the iPhone, the new iPhones, the, even the last generation iPhones, and the the cameras inside of here, the technology, the processing, the software has become so good that it's really hard to take a bad image with an iPhone these days. iPhone 11 Pro Max is what I own. The 11 Pro has the same cameras, it's just a smaller screen size. But I've been getting some amazing, cool results, fun results, I'll say. Now, this is not the camera I'm gonna take out to shoot concerts or clubs. It's just not, it's not going to work for that. But for day-to-day -day use, street photography, um, selfies that are so big these days, uh, vacations, family, this can do the job um, and look beautiful. I've been seeing a lot of people online saying, oh, the DSLR, another nail in the coffin for the SLR. Well, this is also going to eventually be a nail in the coffin for most cameras, except for professionals of course, who need that raw processing power of a real camera. For enthusiasts like me, like some of you watching, who will never get enjoyment from shooting with a phone. I admit, I don't get the enjoyment, the visceral feeling uh, of, of photography when I'm shooting with a phone. I, I don't, but at the same time, it's a different experience. Um, it's fun, it's easy. The camera, make sure your images are going to look great right out of the camera. You have all kinds of options with the iPhone 11 software. You can shoot with all three lenses at the same time and then choose which one you like later. Um, it's pretty amazing. This thing has just been a lifesaver for the last week or so with a lot of things I, use ca I used to use cameras for, right? The iPhone 11 has been improved dramatically in the camera department. Other than that, the battery life's a little better, the processor's a little faster. It's basically the same phone as the 10 I used to have, um, but the camera is just on another level. Um, so these phones, I wrote an article over at stevehuffphoto.com last week where I think the camera industry is heading. And you know, a lot of what I wrote talks about smartphones and how they've been improving each and every year. And if you think about it, the progress they've made over just say the last five years in the cameras, I like to say this is a camera with a cool phone built in because the cameras have gotten so good. So let's forward another five years, another 10 years. Believe me when I say these phones are going to be taking images in just a few years that rival images we're getting with three and $4,000 cameras. Mark my words, five years ago I talked about the phones that in the near future were going to be getting so good they were going to rival uh, most small cameras and pocketable cameras and even beat out those cameras. So today most of us, 99% of us in the world, well I'll say 98% of us in the world, are 
can get by and fully be happy with something like this camera, the iPhone 11 Pro camera system. It's the hardcore enthusiasts, the hobbyists, and especially the professionals who will still want a physical, nice working uh, camera, right? Uh, whether you shoot Sony, Nikon, Canon, Olympus, Leica, right? What have you. Um, you're always going to like that experience of shooting with a real camera. But that audience is starting to decline as these phones get better and better because everyone, it seems like, has a phone in their pocket these days. So there's never a moment that we have to miss because we didn't bring our camera along. So that's the beauty and magic of these phone cameras. I love the iPhone 11 Pro Max. It's the first iPhone that I am happy with as a camera and the first iPhone that I am using way more as a camera. Um, so big improvements overall. Highly recommend this if you want um, to have a much better camera in your phone. Of course, I will still shoot my physical cameras from time to time or when I need the low light capability or I need a special character of a lens or I need uh, to print something large, I will always use my real physical cameras. So for everything else, including video, I can use this on a day-to-day -day basis because it's always with me. So the A9 Mark II was announced. I know a lot of you are going to enjoy that. Uh, if I still owned an A9, I would not go out and buy an A9 Mark II, but if I was a professional who needed that speed and reliability, I'd probably buy two of them. Um, so other than that, coming up in the next couple weeks, I'll be doing a video or two on two brand new cameras that have yet to be announced, but they're going to be announced very soon. I hope to do full videos or reviews of these cameras in my usual style, but um, I'll have other videos coming before then. I'm also going to have a new hi-fi review coming because this channel is not just about photography. That's my main focus here, but the channel's called Steve Huff. So I review and talk about tech, cameras, hi-fi, whatever it is I feel um, some of you may want to know about. So there's some cool stuff coming up. I'm in the process of redoing this room. I'm going to paint it, uh, redecorate it, and I have another room in the house I'm doing that to, to shoot video in. So uh, that's why this room looks kind of, let me show you, looks kind of barren and empty right now because I'm in the process. I'm going to start taping it off to paint. But uh, thanks for stopping by again. If you like what I do, thumbs up and subscribe. Check back to stevehuffphoto.com. 11 years of real world reviews. Heck, it's almost 12 years now of real world reviews there. Thousands and thousands of posts. Uh, if, you, if you're ever bored, go there and check out the index tab and you can see every post ever made on the site. It's crazy. Only do that if you're bored though because uh, I wouldn't recommend it otherwise. Have a great day, have a great weekend, have a great night. Uh, always smile, always try to be positive and spread happiness and love, right? This world is crazy today. Be kind to each other. Love you all, thank you, and I will see you next time.